Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. All week long, we are catching up with our favorite female judges on daytime TV during our Sisters of the Court Week. Our next guest is serving the drama on the court TV show Justice with Judge Maybelline, and she does not mince her words. Okay. Take a look. You should have found out your rights as a tenant. If your property has something wrong with it that affects your health and welfare, and you notify the landlord in writing, and you give her reasonable time to correct the problem, then if the landlord does not correct the problem, you as a tenant have the right to correct it, withhold your rent, and pay the cost and show it that you corrected it. But you stay two more months, and then you stay three or four more months without paying rent. That's why she got a judgment for non-payment. <laughs> in Please that welcome my favorite judge in the whole wide world, <laughs> my auntie Judge Maybelline. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Boy, you. Boy, they don't stand a chance down uh, there. Oh. You just be getting them all the way together. Yeah, now, I'll try. Miss Maybelline, how do you stay stern, direct, and fair, though? Because that's who I am. I'm stern, direct, and fair. I grew up in a family where you had to be stern. My father was stern. You had to speak what you say, meant, and you had to say what you meant, mm -hmm. and, and not take it back. Mm. Once it comes out your mouth, That's you it. had to be direct, and you know I, I can't even play games because I'm so direct. I don't know how to do that. Mm. That's, That's who right. I am. And fair. Fairness is what judging is all about. Impartiality, mm -hmm. fairness, and you learn that. And I've learned it as a child, and I've followed it up in my profession. So mm. fairness is something that I do. Well, speaking of fairness, yes. we are all aware of uh, the case in Dallas where Amber, how do you pronounce it? Geiger, Geiger, Geiger. Where the judge actually got off of the bench mm. and gave the young lady a hug mm -mm. and a Bible. So what are your thoughts on that behavior from the judge? My thoughts on that behavior that it was totally inappropriate hmm. uh, because it was and totally unprofessional and violated the rules of ethics for judges. Uh, that was a criminal defendant who had been found guilty of a heinous crime mm -hmm. and you were treating her as though she were a victim. But even though if she were a victim, judges show impartiality. Yes, yes. Yes. We have our feelings, but we can't express and show those feelings mm -hmm. to the defendants or to the plaintiff. We are impartial persons when it comes down to the system. So that was totally unprofessional and unheard of. Okay. And I, I was just, you know, it's like, what, what, she, she killed a black man, so she gets a hug and a kiss and a, and a hug and, and a, a kiss. kiss. And a oh, kiss. this is ridiculous. Now, okay, so here's my question <laughs> then. What penalty needs to happen for something like that? Or does she just get away with that? Like, because well, clearly, I mean... Well, unfortunately, we don't have penalties as judges. Oh. We do judicial misconduct. misconduct. And okay. the well, the penalty could be that she could be removed from the bench. I don't think that her violation was such that she should be removed, but she certainly should be reprimanded. But who knows mm -hmm. what may happen, but she goes before the Judicial Conduct Board. Yeah. Mm. I think it shows partiality. It yeah. certainly did, and it mm -hmm. violated, that's why it violated the code. Because So now, is she going to do this for every defendant right. who's convicted of a heinous crime? I mean, what was the difference between, what made you feel the need to hug this defendant and give her a Bible? That's not the first murder person that person right. who's committed murder that you've sentenced. What, what was that all about? And I then, just didn't I'm, understand it. If I'm the mother of the child that was, that was slain, Yes. I would have felt very, I would have felt a way. Like, the judge is going to hug this guy. Right, like, you hug anybody, hug mama. Uh, who's hug feeling mama. all this pain from her child being killed. <sighs> hug the mother if you were going to hug anybody. This is but she I'm certainly saying. shouldn't have hugged anyone. Well, Miss Maybelline, mm -hmm. you've been in the business, well, been a judge for over 40 years now? Yes. My God. Ooh. Been in law for over 40 oh, years. Oh, in law for yes. over 40 yes. years. And criminal years justice. Judges. Criminal if, justice, if it wasn't all of it. If it wasn't criminal justice, what would it be? Was there any, ever another area that you wanted to uh, practice in? Oh, my specialty turned out to be family law. Oh, okay. I started as a prosecutor, then I began, then I went to a defense attorney, mm -hmm. and then I found family law, and I found my niche. Okay. And so I ended up as a specialist in family law, and that's what I do, domestic violence, child custody, mm. all of those other issues related to marriages mm -hmm. and relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You shall be getting them too, child. Okay. <laughs> so let me ask you, as, as as a judge, yes. do you ever feel judged when it comes to your career as far as your male counterparts are concerned? Mm. Do you feel that they're held at a different standard? Most definitely. Just like this judge who hugged someone, uh, she's going to be reprimanded. Our male judges do a lot of things impartial, like don't, you know, don't, uh, 
do justice in terms of when they impart the law, nothing happens to them. So wow. yes, and I, as a judge and as a female attorney, I have had instances where the male uh, defendants or litigants, they would not give me the proper respect uh, as a, a judge. I've had instances where the judge would not give me the proper respect as a female attorney. Mm. They'd say to me, girl, a oh, gal. No. Oh, yeah. Surely you just. Yes. Well, Judge Maybelline, thank you so much for coming by today. Please check your local listing for her show, Justice with Judge Maybelline, and you can follow her on the gram at Judge Maybelline. For those of you staying with us, Judge Maybelline is coming to the table next. Don't forget the conversation continues on all social media platforms. We are back on Sister Circle Live with Judge Maybelline, and since Judge is always in the house, we had to bring the girls to us on the yes. couch yes. to go ahead yes. and question the judge along with us, and we're going to do right. some questions. Fire! That's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> we so had the, we, the yeah, judge get the judge. Get the yes. judge. Yes. 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 So, of course, we had the amazing uh, Centoya Brown on the show yesterday. Uh, she was recently released from prison after f spending 15 years uh, uh, for, for killing a, a man. In her words, clemency is an act of mercy. Uh, what can her case teach young people? This is what she said about her being released. Well, oh. about being released, it teaches young people that you have to fight through the system and not give up when you know that you are being unjustly treated. You can't mm -hmm. just give up. Um, that was horrible for her to have been convicted for that crime, in my opinion. And I'm glad that she kept fighting and did not give up, and that someone finally realized that she was a victim herself right. of domestic violence that she had endured for years, and sex trafficking, and rape, mm -hmm. and a molestation, yes. and you call it. Mm -hmm. And she just finally had enough, and the only thing that she knew to do was to kill. That's the way she got rid of her abuser. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that one should go to prison for that. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. but we also, the lesson that can be learned is that you need to let someone know when you're in these situations as a young person and don't try to handle it all yourself. Yes. Um, and this social media, don't, don't answer those, um, don't get on social media meeting people and going places and mm -hmm. going out with strangers and don't hanging out. DM but too. it's not always strangers. <laughs> you just have to talk to someone and that, let them know what you're going through. But family has to make it safe and make children feel yes. mm -hmm. that you can come to me right. with whatever is going on mm -hmm. and I will protect you. We have to say to our children, you're protected. Yes, yes, yes. and not lash out if something doesn't, That's right. you know, it's not in favor of us. That's yes. right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, speaking of, of, of Centoya Brown's case, we're now looking at Rodney Reed in this situation in Texas where he has been on death row for 26 years right. for uh, allegedly, allegedly killing, killing his uh, mistress. Um, and and it's, the evidence is showing that he has no DNA in the area and now we're trying to fight to get him off. Yes. What are your thoughts on this? Well, my thoughts is that years ago, uh, we were railroaded. A lot of people were railroaded mm -hmm. into jail and into prison systems. And everyone says, not everyone, but allegedly killed. The, he may be innocent because the DNA evidence was not there and they didn't do it then. And I think he should be given the opportunity to prove his innocence. And he has maintained it from the beginning. Wow. So you, a lot of times prisoners do that, but when you're talking about DNA and evidence that you can use, which will say yay or nay, then give him the opportunity yes. at least to get the evidence. And what, what, but what is the consequence if they don't? I mean, it's coming up in a minute, this uh, execution. Unfortunately, he's been convicted. He's been been tried, he's been convicted, he's been sentenced to death, and unless they overturn that and allow the new evidence, the rules of law say that you have to come up with new and different evidence that was not available to you at the time of trial. And because the DNA evidence was not available at the time of trial, that is just cause to do it. But you have to have a judge, again, a male judge, unlikely, who would not do that or a different judge who probably would not do that. A judge who's not feeling the sympathy and empathy for him as that judge did for Amy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God, Amber Geiger, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, let's talk a little bit about everything that's going on in the court. You came to, we came to know you uh, with divorce court and now it's all about justice with Judge Maybelline. Yes. Judge Maybelline. Do you really ever walk out of the courtroom and say, am I truly helping these people? Am I really making a difference? You know, I don't walk out the courtroom saying, am I? 
I walk out the courtroom saying I am helping these yes. people. Yes. Because I walk yes. in there with that responsibility that my goal and my job is not just to entertain, but to teach and to educate yes. and to motivate I'm and so to stimulate. So that. I walk I'm out so there happy. saying yeah. somebody, yeah. somebody who looked at this show today was helped. And my prayer before I do the show every day is Lord, let someone receive what they need to receive yeah. from this show today. I love so it. I know it. I don't yeah. walk out asking, did I? Mm -hmm. I yeah, know that's, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Speaking of show, you have a podcast with my mommy too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's called Sassy Women of Wisdom. Yes. yes. And what, what kind of wisdom do you all impart on the people doing this podcast? Well, the four of us, who is Miss Braxton, Miss Constance, and Miss uh, 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 Beverly, what we impart is wisdom of, through the ages from what we've learned. We want to share with you. We're all seasoned women. Yeah. Uh, wisdom are like growing old gracefully or aging gracefully. We want to share with people how you raise your children, raising children, the issues that come up, not just small children, but even as adults. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with your adult children? Do you get into their relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, How do you handle that? Are you just there for them or you talk too much? Uh, what issues <laughs> do you face? <laughs> what issues do you face as, do we face as you're growing? Menopause that people don't like Ooh. to talk about. The change of life, all of those things. The yes, feelings Lord. that you go through and when someone dies, how do you handle death? How do you handle mm -hmm. grieving? Mm -hmm. uh, child birthing, how do you, we talk about issues oh, that wow. people don't want to touch. Oh, this uh, is the how best do you get off into sexual, <laughs> in yes. the world? <laughs> we teach every age group from the cradle to the grave, wow. how to live based to upon our experiences right. and how to handle life. I don't have to tune in to that. You have to tune in to that. What, what's the response been like? It's been pretty well, particularly when we talked about fathers. I, we didn't realize mm. so many women didn't have relationship with fathers. Mm -hmm. And when we talked about the relationship with fathers, mm -hmm. they really fell in love with that. All of us have experienced some type of domestic violence. We talked about that and just sharing. People hide things. Mm -hmm. And when you're transparent and when you say, uh, I've been through that and this is the way I handled it, it gives you power. Yes. It empowers women to, to say, I've been through this and I can make it. So yes. that's what we talk about. Yes. We're real. We share our lives. And our lives are an open book yes. as much as we want to open it up. Oh, to my God. I love that. Awesome. I love that so much. Awesome. My God today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Judge. Maybelline. It's always a pleasure. Please always. make sure you check your local listings for her show, Justice with Judge Maybelline. And you can follow her on the gram. Yes, she's very active at Judge Maybelline. That's Thank right. you so much.